All right, folks, back with another Starbase Summary. It's March 16th through the 19th. Remember, the purpose of the videos is for us to take a look at the things that are generally happening around Starbase and talk about them. I'm not going to describe every single thing in detail, although that is really cool the way they're assembling that scaffolding there. Putting up a little bit of a wall. Of course, all this work is something that I alluded to in the last video. The days of the high bay are numbered. First, there was a windbreak. That one burned down. Not really, they tore it down. And then there was the mid bay. That one burned down, fell over, and sank into the swamp. I don't think it goes in that order, but you know the drill. They tore that one down as well. And now the high bay, which is now the small bay of the three, is also getting disassembled to make way for the giga bay. So as we see the uh, scaffolding and uh, safety areas and work happening to prepare that building to come down, that is the plan. The way over at Pad B, the structure for the gantry continues to come together. Got a side angle going now. It will be very interesting to see how the pipes and tubes and everything like that go together here. Again, sometimes if I see something that looks really interesting, I might talk more about it. I'm not going to stop the video or pause it or, wait, now we're going to talk about this for five minutes. Nah, the video keeps playing and I keep talking. Mary here getting some fantastic up-close shots of all the safety tie-offs as they're working. That almost looks like a flooring. Look at the way that that flooring has, like, holes in it. It's almost like a corrugate, corrugated grating with a cool design. That's interesting. I wonder if that's functional. I mean, it certainly looks like it's very grippy, right? But is that also to let uh, water drain through it? Will the deluge somehow get up here? Doesn't seem like it should, but... I guess you have the top of the water cool steel plate that we've seen all of the uh, plumbing. Not even the steel plate there. I guess the top of the new launch mount should be uh, cooled by water as well. I don't know. This is what we do in these videos. Like, we watch what we see on the screen and we just talk about it. I don't have super final answers and I don't have super secret people at SpaceX who tell me everything to say, right? Where would be the fun in that? We just watch what's happening and talk about it. Like this 30 hours of concrete pouring that was done. It's hundreds of trucks coming in, pumping the concrete over the new flame diverter for Tower 2. Some more work here on Tower 2 as well. Can we figure out what they're doing? I didn't really see what they were doing. This looks like it's up on the chopsticks. Yep, the shiny black tubular parts say chopsticks possible deluge pipes deluge deluge either way you want to hear it i've communicated the word to you you know what it's for water goes through it and sprays everywhere there's the base of that spacex crane we've been seeing them taking that apart and uh, moving it to a storage yard a little bit outside of starbase and then a shot showing both of the pads. There really is a stark difference between the white tower and then the original tower. Like the dark, battle-tested, flame-trenched. Flame-drenched is probably the right way to say that. Uh, original tower that's had multiple flights. Eight flights now. Go off from it. Let's see here. Device slash cover attached to the booster quick disconnect. Look at that. We have a tough one there, because we got some heat haze in. What's going on? Is that like a protective thing or an adapter of some sort? Or like does it clean it off? What do y'all think that that uh, device is for? Oh, and of course Mary gets a nice up close. Now see, is this a... It almost looks like it can seal it. Maybe it's for testing purposes. I know sometimes we've seen... Uh, they just had like tape and covers on it. And then they do tests, and the covers will, like, blow off sometimes, right? I, I wonder if this is a more more of a fixture to protect those pipes so you don't get fog and sand and humidity and all that sort of stuff inside the pipes. I do not know. But super curious to see them sort of mature the processes and equipment and all that sort of stuff. That is a very, that is a breaker bar if I've ever seen one. Look at that thing. Somebody needed some torque. That's like, a, that's like a four or five foot breaker bar. Huh. <laughs> There's the mural again. 
with the high bay whose days are numbered on the right hand side and the two mega bays on the left hand side. Oh, apparently we're gonna we're gonna do a phone call up here. You want me you want me to do what? How, how, how are we supposed to take this thing down? Can I take it? Can I just hit the windows with a sledgehammer and just put some tape below so people aren't underneath it? I wonder what that conversation was. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. <laughs> we don't get a lot of opportunities to do that, to guess at uh, what a phone <laughs> conversation is doing. What did the YouTube comments say? There was a tablet in the other video, and I was like, what's that tablet for? And somebody in the YouTube comments said, they're looking up how-tos on YouTube. How to deluge, how to weld pipe or whatever. Speaking of, look at that huge manifold there to distribute water to all of the channels of the top of the second OLM. There we've got some piping being fork lifted. Fork left. For <laughs> What's the past tense? How do you conjugate fork lifted? I don't know. Uh, here's the windows. I didn't see that guy hitting them with a hammer, but look at the rust on those, I mean, I know, flying buttresses, external supports. Somebody in the comments has told me probably a proper engineering term for those before, but I didn't use it enough, so I didn't retain it. Y'all know how that is. Like, somebody told you, and then you don't have a cause to say that over and over again, right? And so you don't remember. The next time you see it, you're like, I know I'm supposed to know what that is, but I don't actually, like that. I didn't remember. It happens. That's how it goes. Those stands look like they're turning out to go to the launch site. We've seen a lot of this for the vertical tankage with, like, the tank holage in the bottom of it there. Picking it up. We're going to have to flip it sideways because, or I guess flip it upright because it's currently sideways. How did they do that? The answer is two, well, two cranes or two things on a single crane, it looks like. That's a neat trick. There's like two different, huh, it's actually really cool. Good job, blue and white crane. I guess that makes sense. I don't know that I've ever seen a crane do that before, but it makes perfect sense that they should be able to. In any event, putting some blue counterweights on an SPMT here. Oh, are they actually gonna put in permanent walls? These little lattice garden structures, right? You see with the forklift holes on the bottom? They move those in and out every launch because I think the launch would blow them asunder is probably a good $5 word to use there. Uh, but finally putting in proper concrete walls is good to see. There you can see the design of how that cutie hood slides down. You see that special shape that both uh, rotates at 90 degrees plus into position and then also sort of pulls it back to cover it. I like seeing stuff like that. I wonder if that's a computer program that generates that motion, or is there just an engineer who, like, licks their thumb and holds it up to the computer screen, and they're like, eh, it should be about a 23.2 degree curve. Slowly descending at a rate of some odd degrees per degree or whatever. Good times. Tanks being refilled. You can tell because of the hose going to the tanks. No, oh, potentially we've... we've refilled them and now we're taking them to where they'll be more useful. Sort of feel like you could have driven the truck to where the tanks were and then refilled them, but maybe they, they're transported empty? I don't know if that makes sense. Huh. Anyways. Top of the high bay. We're going to see more of this. Getting some good documentation. Caesar out getting this one of the final days of this building. God, that rust. The environment out there is just brutal, even to stuff like that. And what are you going to do? Have somebody go up there like a battleship and paint those things once a month? You'd perpetually be painting them. Look, inside you can actually see the crane. I wonder if they're going to take the crane out, like uninstall it. Is it going to roll off? Does it make any sense to sell that thing to someone else? Or is it so specifically designed for the building that there's not really a market for used uh, bridge cranes? I do not know. Like all of these things, again, it's it's so interesting. Are we, are we painting the grass green? Tell me, we're, tell me it's, yes. I saw Micro doing this. It's like usually a mixture of like seed and sometimes uh, something to sort of hold it down and keep it from blowing away and fertilizer. It's not like they're just painting it with green paint so that it looks nice. 
I, it may be green paint. I don't know exactly what they're doing there, but I know normally, like from dirty jobs when Mike Rowe did it, I learned a lot about spraying green things on hillsides. <laughs> learned, actually learned a lot from Mike Rowe. There's a lot of work that it takes to uh, make the offices that you work in and the buildings that you live in and the roads that you drive on and the sewers that you're, quite honestly, poop goes through, right? I think a lot of people don't look around and appreciate all the infrastructure and the people that make it happen. So, anyways. What have we here? That is a little remote control compactor thing in the background. Almost positive one day those are going to be controlled by AI or computers or something. like. There's a, there's a dude there driving that thing. How is that not like an automated task? I'd rather let that guy kick up his feet in the Bahamas somewhere and drink a Bud Light or whatever instead I have to drive that thing around, but, you know. A little bit of crawler crane action here. Yes. The skid steering, the tank tread steering here. Excellent. There's a ladder you can climb the crane up with there. Those stair st steps. More of those valve actuators. We see these quite a bit. Like the Starship t-shirt there. Ah, yes. It's Booster 15. Being moved over to the Rocket Garden. Wow, that's a huge difference. Between the uh, the long-range camera that has to look through the haze and it was a little humid, humid, humid. Was it like French humidity? A little humid out there. Um, and then the close-up camera where you get details like this. That's too cool. A little... Patina. Look at the top of it. You can see the hot staging effects. Oh, that's one of my very favorite things. Like seeing spaceflight hardware that has clearly done battle with physics and chemistry, combustion, whatever you want to say. Like seeing the streaks and the lines and the burnt segments and the slightly charred things and cracks and crevices and all the evidence that this thing isn't a, a model or something that they just put together as a showpiece like it actually went out and did something i am a sucker for that that is a reason i love going to museums and seeing uh flown hardware right aircraft that had a history and then ended up in a museum or spacecraft or equipment cranes steam engines trains i don't even care i love seeing all that stuff it's just cool i don't know if y'all agree with me or not maybe not everybody does but you know if you don't agree that flo sp flown spaceflight hardware is cool Here's a concrete truck for you, or a cement truck, or an aggregate truck, or whatever you want to call it today. Uh, I'm sure everyone will educate me about that chemical process down in the comments, but my name is John for NSF. Appreciate y'all hanging out with me, and we will see you nerds later.